Peace to the family, peace to the family. How you guys doing? Yeah, so it's Brother Polite. And I'm here to talk to you about making this money, six figures. <clears throat> now the thing about it all is that I need you guys to take the time out. Okay, boom. Hold on real quick. <clears throat> this is for the people that's already in my class, but I elected to do this one live because there's some things I get to share with you guys because it saves me time when you do take the course. The course is $225. We're at a point in the course where it's time for us to get ready to access six figures. <clears throat> We're going to do this any of a number of ways. You got to access six figures by getting monies from insurance, by getting a policy you can borrow against. You can access six figures by getting at least two credit cards that give you at least $50,000 line of credit. You can access six figures by setting up an irrevocable life insurance trust or an endowment fund trust. Okay? And then have it assigned to an insurance policy of your choice, having retitled at least three different businesses or streams of income to the trust, thereby making it equitable. So you leverage that equity and it creates a viable opportunity for you to get access the cash value of the insurance policy you want or even go further <clears throat> okay so there's numbers of ways to get it done <clears throat> I'm doing this one because this will save time for those of you that's joining the course let me write it there right now for you brotherpolite45gmail.com <clears throat> okay, let me pin it. Okay, brotherplight45 at gmail.com. If you're interested in taking the course, again, it's $225 now, discounted rate. Uh, it's three sessions out of six. Our sessions are inclusive of making money off of life insurance, learning how to make money off of tax lien, tax deeds, <clears throat> real estate. Holistic health, we have a holistic class, holistic mathematics, what I like to call it. That's how, that's the phrase that I coined, or the term I coined. And then also we have credit restoration. In our credit restoration class, we'll be teaching you how to not only remove negative items off your report, but add positive items to your report. Not only add positive items to your report, ultimately boost your credit score in addition to that you'll be able to access larger lines of credit by way of your credit card, personal loans, or business loans, and or a combination of all those things. So that's the, po that's the purpose. So for those of you that's in my course, I know you paid for it. You might say, yo, why is this going public? Don't worry. These are some prerequisite steps that empowers me with certain abilities to get people going in real time. So when they take the course, they have certain things in place already. So right now, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things I need you guys to put into place. Whether you're taking my course right now or not, put these things into place. <clears throat> Take action. Number one, if you don't have a landline already, get a landline. That's going to help you for two things. One, for those of you that's in my class that will be applying for black cards, I want you to call by way of a landline. Get a phone. Lock that thing into the wall, that cord. Get that cord and call off a landline. Also, get a landline, and that's going to be one of the things that you're going to add to your credit report. Positive items you're going to add to your credit report. <clears throat> and then you're going to submit that information to the creditors. That's going to be one of the new things you want to get credit for on your credit report. Because you have the right to add additional things that qualify to your credit report to boost your score. So one of the things I need you guys to do is to get a landline if you don't have one already. Get a phone number to that landline. Don't do a Google chat phone number. <clears throat> Listen to me carefully. Don't use a cell phone number. And there's another reason why I want you to have a landline that pertains to the actual black cards. <clears throat> okay? You don't want to use a phone number that has any type of history on it other than what you're about to be doing here from this point forward. And I'll explain that more during the course. So I need you to get a landline. Why? 
one of the main reasons other than you applying for the black card those of you that uh, reach the level where I give you the green light and say hey it's time for you to prove for the black card uh, or apply for the black card I need you to get the landline all right and the reason why I want you to do that because it's going to be a positive item that you're going to add to your credit report so it will help me those of you that's already in the course and those of you that are not if you just get it already get it out the way because I don't want to teach it and then you got to go do it and then we got to do follow-up classes it's actually best if you follow some of this now okay so that's one two I also want you guys and that's per Lexus Nexus trust me you'll, you'll understand it later I also want you guys to get you a UPS box okay uh, or FedEx box find an area where the median income suffice where people are on the average making over hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year anything where people are making over hundred fifty thousand dollars a year it's a reputable school district you want to go in a reputable school district you want to go in an area where it's low crime so anywhere the schools are very good there's little to no crime businesses and our residents are making over hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year you want to get a FedEx mailbox or UPS box. It's not going to cost you much, $20, $30. By the month, even cheaper if you buy the six-month plan or the year plan. It rashes out to be cheaper. Okay? So, um, you'll do that. You can add a new phone line to your phone lines. You don't even necessarily need a phone. But you can add a new phone line to uh, the phone's bill that you have, and you add that to your report as well. And you submit that and say, I would like you to add this to my report as well. Okay? Uh, if you borrow from a friend and your friend has an LLC, a trust, a type B gift company, or some form of corporation, an S corp of some sort, then I'm going to ask that you get an invoice from your friend and they confirm that you paid them back. You satisfied the debt. All right? And they put that in writing. And then you send that to the creditors and add that to the report. You get an agreement that lists the terms of when you have to pay your friend back. You can talk to your friend now. I want to tell you, you can even give your friend some money so they can give it to you on the record. Create the terms, create the agreement, and then have them confirm that you satisfied the debt in enough time before things got chippy. You're going to add that. You're going to annex that to an affidavit that's going to be sent out there. Okay? I'm going to go over the document where you add positive reports to your credit score. These are things that I want you to just take into consideration. Very important. Like I said, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com if you're interested in taking the course. The purpose of me doing this right now because we're getting to a point in the course where it's time to really make that bread off the credit because we got points in the course where we got to make it off of insurance and points in the course where we got to make it off of tax lien, tax deed, real estate. Right now we're focusing on credit restoration. Not only do you have the right, I'm always hearing people talk about removing negative items for them from their report. And I'm saying, hey, you know, you got to also add positive items to your report as well. You got to do that. You got to add positive items to your report as well. Don't just sit there. You can email me the phone number, Brother Polite 45, P O L I G H T, Brother Polite 45 at gmail.com. So many of us don't even realize. Because from pre K to 12th grade, 14 years of going to school, they ain't teach you one class pertaining to credit, not one. So you set up and destined to fail. Because everyone's entitled to get at least six figures in credit, mess it up, and then have a hard time trying to get it. But we already have a hard time before we even seen five figures in credit. Most of us ain't never seen a $20,000, $30,000 credit card. So the goal is to make sure you can get approved for at least two credit cards at $50,000. So you have $100,000 at your disposal with, with a strong enough business plan, strong enough business model, 
some income streams that you'll learn about. Like you take my mentorship program, then you learn about different income streams. You'll be able to fund those income streams from the lines of credit that you get. Whether you access the cash value of insurance, whether you get the credit from your credit cards, or whether you get the credit from your trust that you're gonna to retitle to different businesses to. And you can borrow against your insurance policies, borrow against your insurance policy, or you can access monies from your actual trust. It's all good. Okay? <clears throat> so, let's get into some of this. Let's get to some of this. Let's do this. Let's get here. So I want you to just take those steps. It's very important. Let's go here. <clears throat> we got to get access to 100 grand. I don't want to talk to you about no low play play money, so sometimes people get upset when they say, yo, polite. Why are you talking about money so high? You talk, the, the numbers are so high, people feel intimidated and they don't want to deal with it. So this is actually one of the letters. I got 33 letters and affidavits in template form that's going to be sent to different credit bureaus and financial institutions alike for the purposes of you being able to get access to these monies. If you're interested in the mentorship, which is way more extensive and personal to get the job done more efficient, uh, you hit me up at brotherpolite 45 at gmail.com. It's pinned right here. Those of you that's on Facebook, you leave your name and your number. You say what you're leaving your name and your number for. Don't just leave your name and no number. Don't leave your name and your number and don't tell me what the subject matter is. Or you go for the course. The course is six classes and number. Whatever you miss, you're going to get it. Whatever you miss, you're going to get it back. You're going to get the links in the corresponding documents. But right now, our focal point is credit restoration. That's class number three. This is a preemptive strike towards class three. I'm actually going to do class three this Saturday. <clears throat> this is like class 3A because I want to make sure that you guys get you a UPS or FedEx box. Do not get a United States Postal Office box. Please don't. Do not. Get exactly what I tell you and make sure you get it in the neighborhood where people are making over $150,000 or more a year where the crime is very low, okay? These are things you have to know. <clears throat> and this person says, okay, what are you gonna do once you get the line of credit? Please stay focused. That's all for the course. That's the income streams if you buy the mentorship. Right now, I gotta stay the course and stay in order. Right now, I mean, we, we don't wanna jump all over the place and get nothing done. So what I'm asking you guys to do is, first and foremost, make sure you get a landline, no matter what. That's for when you apply for the black card, one. And two, you want to get the landline because you want to add that to your report. <clears throat> okay, so here we got here, it says, it says getting positive information added by anyone other than the source is not an easy task. However, sometimes for a fee, a credit bureau will often add the information if proof is acquired from the source. If you have valid proof of a debt with the creditor's name, contact information, and history, <clears throat> include that with your request. Okay. So here, you're going to have the names. You're going to fill all that out. Boom, boom, boom. So those of you that have... Let me say this. Those of you that have the templates, don't send the templates out until your return address can be of one of the new addresses that I told you to get from UPS or FedEx. Do not send it from your previous address. Send it from the new address I'm telling you to get because you will only have a positive history attached to that address. I don't care if the place is far from you. Have your mail forwarded from the new address to your old address if need be. But don't have it so ambiguous where you get mail from both addresses. I need you to rock out with me for three months extended and see to it that you're getting your mail only from the new address because it's going to look good because the second you get a new address credit bureaus already know and they look at it and they say to themselves okay this person's on their come up this person's making good money that's what they say to themselves they say this person's making a good amount of money that's what they say oh wow they're in another neighborhood in fact it looks good when you transition from a bad zip code to a new zip code because they have what you call credit card redlining so credit card redlining is when they actually have areas, they can't deny you of credit based on your race, but they can't deny you of credit based on your zip code. 
most races exist in clusters called zip codes. So it's a, it's a real easy way to alienate us or deny us of getting larger lines of credit. So even those of you that are getting 700 credit scores, 750, and you're still not being approved of $200,000 loans or getting black cards, that's because of the wealth score quotient. So this is another thing I need y'all guys to do. If you must surf the internet for things that do not make you money, things that don't represent or demonstrate your best adult behavior, create a different type of an account non-corresponding to anything attached to you. Okay? Get a different phone that you don't use to identify yourself and do your surfing on that phone. Because CDAs, consumer data aggregates, CDAs use your social media activity to deny you for larger lines of credit. Credit bureaus say, hey, give me the data analytics on what people that surf for information like Jordan sneakers quite often, Gucci shoes or whatever. What is the likelihood of people that spend X amount of time on social media doing certain type of activity in retrospect to their debt to income ratio? You understand what I'm saying? And you get alienated for that. So what you need to start doing, I'm dead ass serious, find a way to transition from using your social media where you are attached to it immediately when you're surfing the internet for things that don't give you abundance <clears throat> okay that's what I'm talking about okay so make sure you you go out your way and you start doing a clean scrub this is gonna take some time and that's why I elected to say let me just do this class so those of you that are joining I'm gonna do it next Sunday matter of fact, not Friday I'm gonna do it next Sunday but those of you join this class start getting your life together because the social media thing is tricky Make sure you're not attached to your social media if the type of activity you do is watch crackheads fight online. If you like to just watch people uh, learn how to hook up their lace fronts. If you spend time mastering how to cut that stuff up properly to put it on your head. There's a, there's a analysis about people who are interested in that that are prey for being denied certain lines of credit. <clears throat> okay? And this is from CDAs. This part of the game is called the wealth score quotient. So there's things that no matter how good your score is, you can have the best score in the world and still be denied the right amount of money. She done? Oh, she said it. She still, she left? She done back, right? Who's that that came in? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> okay so you got to stop messing around on social media looking at things that don't make you money when you're on social media look up real estate look up things that you can invest in okay that's what you need to do okay look up things that look like it will make you money actually do adult things <laughs> look to invest your money and spend more hours online investigating things that make you more money there's cookies and damn near everything you do and those cookies are technological spies or agents that are designed to retrieve data or extrapolate data from your computer whether you're using it or not it's constantly collecting data once almost every site has cookies in it or forms of cookies in it that's collecting intel and sending it back to the bureaus and they're using these things against you so when you're like, damn, what the hell do I got to do? I'm paying my bills on time and I'm still not getting my props or my love. That's why. So keep that in mind, family. Keep that in mind. Okay? It's not a game. All right? It's not a game. For those who say, oh, I don't be doing that on social media, then let that information go over your head and let somebody else deal with that information. Everything ain't gonna to cater to you specifically for those of you like, oh, I'm okay, I'm good. I'm just telling you, be careful how you surf the net, and if you must do frivolous things on the net, have a different mechanism that's not attached to you to surf the net. 
But when they ask you for your email as part of your username and password for Instagram and for Facebook, when they ask you for your phone number and everything, that's attached to your identity. And they know to connect that with everything else, which comes up to your wealth score quotient. And these are the things that the CDAs allocate towards the credit bureaus, because the credit bureaus can't get that information immediately. So what they do, they have the CDAs as a subsidiary of the same collect that type of data. So they can really idealistically say, you know what? We know the data on these type of people. Facts. Okay? So if you, of course, you know, if you don't have no credit cards, make sure you go out your way to get you a secure card. Apply for one ASAP. If you got $500 to spare, go out there and get you at least a $500 secure credit card. It's going to help you build your credit in real time. The second you get it and you use it, you're already, you're already like, the second you get it in the mail, the second it's on the way to you in the mail, you go to Capital One, you go to Wells Fargo, there's a couple guys out there, Chase, I believe, you go to these guys, ask for a secure credit card. See if you can get two of them, if you can afford to get two secure cards and build Start building a line of credit. Start building a line of credit. Okay? Start building a line of credit. It's very important. Can't play games with these people. And if you have two of them, that's great. And see if you can exercise a balance transfer option. Now, you may want to do one immediately with a bank and then do the other one with one of those credit card agencies, separate and different from the bank. So maybe you get one from Capital One and you get the other one from, let's say, Discovery. So get one from Discovery and get one from Capital One. Make sure at least, uh, make sure your cards have a balance transfer option. Yes, it costs, but I want you to use the balance transfer option at least once every two months. Balance transfer option stipulates, you know, I tell you don't use more than 15% that of the amount of money that is allotted to you in credit. So in other words, if you get a lot of credit for $500 for your credit card, then you shouldn't be using more than $75 out of the $500. do not use more than $75 out of the $500. 15%. Is it the end of the world if you go 20%? No. But I want you at a cap of 15%. Because I want you to get the results I know how to get. So never mind the people that tell you, yo, no, you can spend at least 30%. I'm telling you 15%. And if you go over 15%, the extra amount of money you go over, allocate that into the next credit card, the second credit card. Use the balance transfer option if you go over. So if you got a $500 limit and you know you're not supposed to spend more than $75, but you find yourself spending $100, then what you're going to do is take that extra $25 and you're going to allocate it towards the second card. That behavior, when they see that on an average you stay within a framework of uh, 15% of your credit, and then they see whenever you go over 15%, you allocate the funds by using your balance transfer option. It's going to show that you are a consumer that makes conscientious decisions. And they respect that about you. They'll respect that. <clears throat> That's a fact. Consumers that make conscientious decisions, they respect that. And they're going to work with you. And they're going to say, you know what? This guy is smart. This woman is smart. I want to deal with her. Okay? So again, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com, you leave your full name, your phone number, and you say if you want the mentorship, if you want uh, to purchase the actual course. The people call it the credit course because it's so thorough with the credit, but I'm also teaching you how to make money off of insurance, access to cash value from insurance, and also how to uh, make uh, monies through research for tax lien, tax deed. It's a very extensive course. It's just super extensive. I want you to take the advice from this class to put yourself in a good position so when Sunday comes, y'all can say, yo, Polite, I set up my mailbox, I applied for a secure credit card, I got me a landline, a friend of mine does have a LLC or trust, whatever, they just, they just gave me a loan from their company, right? Even if you help them fund you. And then... You're set to satisfy the loan inside of 15 days, even though you want them, <clears throat> even though they're giving you 30 days. Have your friends say you got 45 days, 30, 45 days to pay them back. Pay them back in 15 days. Take that information and then 
use this information right here, mail it out, annex it to an affidavit and send it out to the financial institutions or credit bureaus that they concern. So you can add positive reports to your credit. <clears throat> They'll boost your credit. Private lending is okay. And you can privately submit good private lending practices that have transpired <clears throat> for the purposes of boosting your credit score. So here we go. So I read the top here. Yeah, it's brother, P-O-L-I-G-H-T 45 at gmail.com. It's $225 for the course. Six classes and number anything you miss, you'll get it back. But right now, this is the focal point. Credit restoration this is what we're focusing on. <clears throat> so you guys have homework. So you'll get the address and everything. So don't send any of this information out until you have the new address because we want the new address on every document that you send out. So please, when you get these PDFs in the mail, those of you that bought the course and y'all have the 33 affidavits and letters that's supposed to be sent to the credit bureaus and financial institutions alike, don't send nothing out without having first set up the new mailbox. That new mailbox is there to ensure that you boost your credit. We don't know what we boost in our credit a lot of times. That's what this course is going to teach you. It's going to teach you the amount of points you get for doing certain behaviors, what certain behaviors are worth on a point scale. You're going to learn those things. And we're going to learn so many different options that are not only good to boost your credit, but also your wealth score quotient, which is the determining factor of whether or not you're going to get six figures or only four. Okay, five figures, only four. <clears throat> so it says, to whom it may concern, I'm writing to request that you please include the additional information attached to my credit history report. You may verify this information with the source, and I have included their contact details. According to the Fair Credit Report and Act, FCRA, Section 602B, I'm permitted to have accurate and true information reflected in my credit report. To accomplish this, I'm requesting that my positive payment history with creditors' name to be added. This will justify, reflect, my payment history. Pardon me, this will justly reflect my payment history. Therefore, I request that you immediately verify and add the enclosed payment history to my credit file. Enclosed proof from creditor. Dispute item and explanation. Please notify me within 30 days that the additional credit information has been added by sending an updated copy of my credit history report to my address above. Also, if you don't have at least credit karma or something to that effect, Find out what trans you and Sparing and Equifax are saying your credit score is. Know that too. I learned from doing things. So when dealing with the course, I realized people don't even know their credit score or they don't know all three. You're supposed to know this like the Bible. Get you an app and make sure you always get a notification that something's going on for your credit. <clears throat> Here's another thing. If you guys are looking to get a job, <clears throat> here's another tip that I need you guys to know out there before you take the class. If you're looking to get a job, Make sure you ask them, are you doing a credit check? And I know you're like, yo, why do I got to ask a job if I'm doing a credit check? Ask them if they do a credit check. Because that's what a lot of companies are doing now. And what it's doing is that you, you come home and you brag, honey, I went out there, I attempted, I applied for 15 jobs. I'm out there, I'm not being lazy. And then your damn report been checked 13 out of 15 times. Your score is going to plummet. And here it is, you're looking to make some money and then you're actually working. It's counterproductive. Because you don't even know that they're checking your report. And when people check your report, your report goes down automatically. So imagine applying for 15 jobs in a week or one day or a few days, not knowing that 13 out of the 15 times or 15 out of the 15 times, your damn credit was checked. The implication is disastrous. So you got to ask them, yo, um, how do I apply for the job without you having to check for credit? Or what can I submit to you? So you don't have to, <clears throat> okay? You gotta ask these questions. Or you gotta really see what the probability is of you getting that job, because you can't afford to have random people who have no intention on really hiring you, but checking your credit, because they're adding information to the CDAs so they can understand more about the type of people that apply for their type of job. <clears throat> so they're working under the table. Facts. Here's another thing. You need to find out. If you don't got pennies off the millionaires, make sure you order that book, call us, email, say I need a copy of pennies off the millionaires. You need a list of the cities and the states 
per their maturation date for debt. You need to find out when this debt expires because you might be paying people off and the debt met its maturation. Every state has a two year limit, three year limit, five year limit, seven year limit on debt. You cannot be in debt past the limit of that city and state. Your debt may have expired already and you're paying it for no reason. So we gotta get that right. And I explained to you the nuances and the particulars. Oh, you, you get the course. Because <laughs> in the course, I break down. Because that's one of the first things you gotta do too. Or if you, <laughs> watch this, or if your debt even meets the criteria of it impacting your credit score. Because not all debt is legitimate or legal. So before you go and start paying these people and lock it in, find out. I'm talking certain credit cards, the way they go about the debt, or what it is that they say you owe, or if a third party has taken over. If a third party has taken over, the, the original creditor sold the debt to them because the debt was about to meet its maturation. So you need to send the third party a letter, which I have, one of the 33 that I sent out to you to let them know it's illegal. You paid for my debt through the original creditor. The creditor wrote it off as a gift, got their money back, sold you the debt for 10%. Here it is, I owe 5,000 to the original creditor. They sold it to you for 500, and they working out a deal with you. You could pay uh, 2,500, and you over here sweating bricks. Like, how did they find my phone number? How did they find me? Well, fuck it, I'm gonna pay this back because I want it on my credit. And here's another thing, if you ever paid anything back, you need to contact TransUnit Sparing and Equifax and let them know that you want it, you don't want to be acknowledged for paying it back. It is better that no one knew you owed anyone money in the first place and things went wrong than for them to know, <clears throat> oh, you did owe somebody something. It got a little shaky, but you did pay it back. You're not getting any extra kudos for letting people know that you paid someone back after you was late. Once you pay the whole thing off, you ask them or you tell them, hey, I need this thing stricken from the record. I got a PDF for that. I got a letter for that. Hey, uh, about that thing right there, I don't want that on my report. I don't want no one to know I eventually paid the debt back because that makes you look bad. It's better that no one knew you had a problem paying for a debt so that a new lender can give you money. They don't need to see a history. Oh, he paid it back. Yeah, let's boost his score and let's give him more money. So here it is. You can have a real good credit score, but you got a report there saying that you paid someone back their debt even though you was late, but you eventually paid it off. And, and people walking around with their chest protruding thinking that's helping them. No, that you'll, you'll keep a high credit score, but your ratio for, for, for debt to income is going to be disproportionate because now they're going to be like, yo, okay, this person pays us back, but we're not giving them 200 grand. We're going to give you 30 grand. Yeah, it shows you eventually pay it back. But what you gonna do when we give you more money and how long will it take to pay it back? We've seen your history. So you want that stricken from the record. Never mind the fact you paid it off. Get it up out of there. So someone said, wow, interesting. I just paid collection agency back. My credit score went up though. Okay, let me say this again. It doesn't matter how high your credit score goes up if no one's giving you 200,000, if no one's giving you a black card, if no one's giving you $300,000. Sometimes you gotta have a very high credit score and not be approved of the amount of money you really need to move and shake. So as I said before, don't be baffled or lost in the matrix just because your credit score is pretty high. Because there's people with lower scores being approved for higher amounts of money. There's people with 650 getting more money than people with 750 because of what they call the wealth score quotient because their social media activity doesn't contradict them. They're not a serial return artist where they're constantly returning clothes after they buy them because they got, a, and a, they got data on people that return clothes often and they say their behavior uh, normally leads to them being in debt. Those speeding tickets that you got, you gotta be careful not to get that. If you get approved of a medicine, make sure you get approved of a medicine that people do not abuse. Because you get approval of medicine that people abuse, your credit score will go out. Because if you get, if, if, let's say you get a, your breast done, or let's say you get in a car accident and you need some Percocets or some muscle relaxers. If they, if they prescribe to you Percocets, if someone prescribes to you Xanax or Valium, <clears throat> ask for the other type of drug that does relatively the same thing. Because Xanax, Valium, Percocets, these are drugs that get abused. And people that abuse those drugs 
because they wind up being addicted to it, they don't prioritize and they wind up being late on their bills because their bill money is going into the drugs. So they got analytics on those people. So even if you get in a car accident and you need muscle relaxers and you get a Percocet, when you get a prescription of Percocet, your wealth score quotient goes down. Your credit score may look the same, but your wealth score quotient goes down. They say, well, don't give those type of people large sums of money because that shit will go into their fucking habit. Because once they use these drugs, these drugs give you an inclination towards abuse or addiction. Facts. I'm talking this talk to you. But the goal is to make sure you get approved of at least two credit cards, 50 grand each. That's the goal of this course. My goal is to make sure everybody take this course is going to get 100 bands. <clears throat> My goal is anybody that, that do the mentorship with me get a quarter million of it. That's the goal. Access and credit that you are due. Don't let them make you think you ain't do it. It's, it's fake fucking money. Because I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to keep it a thousand with you. The money don't become real till you start paying it back. You get approved for a mortgage. Oh, man, they approved me for the loan for $300,000. I got a new house. How come they put the $300,000 in your hand? But it's real money every time you make a payment. But guess what? When you don't pay them, now you owe $300,000. They never even showed you the three hundred grand in the first place. You ready? <laughs> I'll come right. They never even showed you the three hundred grand in the first place. They never did. They never showed you the three hundred grand in the first place. But you owe three hundred grand if you don't pay back your mortgage. That shit funny as hell. Yeah, you good. You, <laughs> you can sit right there. You good. <laughs> they owe you three hundred grand in the first place. And here it is. They approve you of a three hundred thousand dollar loan for mortgage. And then you get the money for the mortgage, right? But you never had it in your hand. And the second you start being late on payments, you owe the 300 grand that they never let you see even existed in the first place. Even if you don't owe them, you're paying interest on 300,000 you never saw in the first place. So what I'm telling you is, you have a great responsibility to become a master of your own destiny. So these are the things that I need you to do. I need you to get into that. I need you to get into that. So just like I said, they could, they could dry snitch on you for your credit, but you also got the right to say, add this to my credit report. So that affidavit that I just showed you, that's what you're going to mail out. But you got to mail it out with a return address. When you mail it out, also you're going to mail it out, registered mail, green card receipt. Registered mail is a fancy form of mail. It's better than just regular signature confirmation. Registered mail, green card receipt means that it goes through a chain of custody in the post office. At least three people have to bear witness that this document actually exists that you're sending out so no one can say they didn't get it. So when you send these letters out and these affidavits out to the credit bureaus and the financial institutions and you say, hey, remove that from my report. Hey, add this to my report. You have every right. <clears throat> you have every right, okay? You have every right when the time comes to say, listen, uh, I'm sending out registered mail green card receipt because the registered mail it's going to go through three people. So by law, no one can lie and say they didn't get it because three people plus you bear witness that it was sent to that person that's four people. When you send something out, registered mail, green card receipt, it resonates with the receiver. Credit bureaus and all of them know what time you want. They're going to deal with yours the priority once they see that registered mail, green card receipt, signature confirmation. Registered mail, green card receipt, signature confirmation. When you go to the post office, that's what you ask for. Excuse me, I'm trying to, I'm looking to send something out, registered mail. <coughs> That's the only way you're sending these letters out. The only way. Do not send the letters out any other way unless you're sending it out registered mail. Signature confirmation. Green card receipt. <clears throat> Please, steps in order. I know you got to watch the video. I apologize. I just wanted to make this happen because we need procedure. I'm going I'm to put the PDF, I mean a PowerPoint together for you guys to get this. But I just want certain prerequisite things to get done between now and the next class. So this call this cl lesson three for those of you that's in the course, 3A. 3B, of course, would be private. But it would be nice for people that's constantly buying the course for you to get these things done so when you come in the course, you don't hear the information, you'd be like, damn, let me start moving. I want you to have it ready so by the time I teach you what you need, you're ready like, yo, what's next? Because I want everyone to succeed. Because if more of us had access to 100 grand, 200 grand, it's nothing if we pull our funds and do something big. Because we still have 90 grand left, we still have 95 left, we still have 20 grand left. You feel what I'm saying? That's the goal. So between the mentorship or, or the credit rep, uh, restoration, tax deed, tax deed, life insurance policy, trust. And if you don't got the trust, do your best to get it effective immediately. Because if you make your trust a creditor, and when you mail these letters out, it's being mailed out on behalf of your trust as your creditor, better results, larger lines of credit. So if you can get a trust beforehand, 
that's even better. If you can't, it's okay. Stick with the steps. Still play the course. You'll get things done. The trust just makes things more efficient. Okay, and that's what I do with the mentorship. It comes with the trust when I do the mentorship or the conscious advisor. Whew. But yeah, I'm about to uh, handle my next engagement. But I wanted to make sure you guys get this information because I want to teach as effectively as possible. I want to teach as effectively as possible. <laughs> Holly can take some in. Nah, we probably can take some uh, right here too. You feel me? You brought any shoes? Like hell. No hell? Hills would have been dope. <clears throat> I'll figure it out. We'll figure something out. But yeah, we're about to get it in. But I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. Yeah, take those notes. <clears throat> like I said, these templates are all here. And what I'm going to do during the week, I'm going to just give up some free information periodically. Intention to file FTC complaint after 60 days. I did that before for y'all. I'll do it again another time. Dispute letters. Dispute follow-up after no response for 60 days. I got some. Dispute credit report, round one, alternative. <clears throat> Dispute after investigation. Prove it letter. You know, you can just send a prove it letter. It ain't that they can't prove it. They ain't gonna want to spend the time proving it. <clears throat> if they don't respond to you, it's a $30,000 fine. What they normally do is just remove the shit from them. So it don't matter if you are guilty. <clears throat> Dispute every freaking thing. Play the game. It ain't like, yo, this guy sent registered mail, spent this money, sent this uh, very strict, concise, well put together affidavit. Man, we gotta pay people to look through all this stuff. Man, just move that shit because the average person don't even know what to do, who to mail, what the procedure is. <clears throat> so, freaking. Let's just remove this person's information. Feel what I'm saying? Cool. So yeah, we're gonna get in it. You gotta put the business in the trust. Trust becomes your creditor, man. You know, company is person. A company is a person, person, corporation, legal fiction, all the same thing. That's a fact. So y'all 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 got the notes. Take the time out, get that in. Let's get it in. Are right, you ready? We're gonna get it in. <clears throat> Take the notes. We're gonna get it in. We don't got no time to play games. So on the on the next go around, we're gonna put that work in and we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be dope. Salute to y'all, love y'all. You already know. What it do? Peace. Hit me up on the email, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com, full name and everything, and we'll we'll get it in. We'll make it happen. We'll make it work. Peace out. See what I be doing? In the middle of all this chaos down here, I be teaching my ass off. I can be down there with mimosas, losing my goddamn mind. But I'm up here. <coughs> I'm up here. Peace, peace, word. There we go, there we go, peace. Alright, y'all. Check the view. See, my man's still there. I hope he's still there. Model. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace.